Here are 20 things I found interesting and awesome about Season 2, Episode 5 of Loki, Science Slash Fiction, which all added up to make this episode a masterpiece. Number 1. While the other characters are sent to their respective branched timelines, Loki remains alone in the TVA, and now he is time-slipping again. If he started time-slipping again, did he ever really stop, or did he just postpone it, and the temporal loom exploding reset him back to his time-slipping state? This is something interesting to think about. Number 2. The episode opens with Loki being alone and time-slipping in the now-empty TVA. Loki sees someone and says hello, but then time-slips, and then he ends up in the same room, and turns out he is the person he said hello to. There truly is no one here except him. It's a haunting moment and a strong start to the episode. Loki seeing someone who turns out to be himself feels so isolated. It was the best way to show he's alone, as opposed to just seeing the TVA is empty. Worse is to have hope and lose it. Number 3. Mobius on a jet ski. He finally got to ride a jet ski. Yes! Number 4. When Loki is time-slipping rapidly through different moments, he ends up in room 25, the interrogation room where Mobius forced him to watch his life on the main timeline, the room where he was shown the story that the TVA had written for him. This is an interesting callback. Number 5. The next interesting thing is the fact that Ouroboros' workshop looks just like his room in the TVA. Turns out his TVA room is based on his old workshop. It just goes to show that the variants' lives in their timelines stay with them, even if they don't remember, like how Mobius is obsessed with jet skis. Number 6. There are two references to Loki and Thor in this episode. First, Obi's book is called Sons of Yorin, and while this could be overanalyzing, it may be a reference to the two sons of Odin. Also, Don, which is Mobius's name in the timeline, sounds like Odin, and Don has two sons, one of which is mischievous, like Loki, and the other one wants a pet snake, like Thor did, as talked about in Ragnarok. Number 7. You're not just moving through time, you're moving through space. Loki has become the Tesseract. In the beginning of the show, him stealing the Tesseract was the inciting incident that turned him into a variant and ended him up in the TVA. Now, two seasons of development later, he has those powers he wanted so badly, and he's ready to use them for good. Number 8. Mobius slash Don said that his wife died four years ago. He is in the year 2022, and the blip ended in 2023. Don's wife was blipped. Number 9. The part where Loki says, Your kids won't even know you're gone, and then Mobius responds with, Yeah, but I will. This line just hit really hard. Number 10. Loki and Sylvie both have very different viewpoints, and yet I can understand where both of them are coming from. Loki believes in supervising the time stream and maintaining some sort of control over it to keep it safe. Meanwhile, Sylvie believes in leaving everything on its own and letting it be to make sure everyone has free will. It's really interesting to see an argument where both people have complete opposite perspectives, and yet they're both sympathetic. Neither of them are completely wrong. They both have solid points. The scene with Loki and Sylvie at the bar is a masterpiece. It's easily the best scene in the show so far. Finally, finally, we get an acknowledgement of the fact that Loki doesn't have a strong sense of identity. From finding out he was literally a different species than he thought he was for a huge chunk of his life, from spending his time spiting Thor and Odin, to defining himself as Mobius' friend and nothing else, he has had a hard time figuring out who he really is. This conversation is why this Loki show exists. This is what the show should be. This is it living up to its full potential. It only took several movies and two seasons of a show, but finally we're going beyond surface level and digging deep into Loki as a character and a person. Also, in the beginning of the season, they weren't clarifying exactly why Loki was determined to save the TVA besides a vague, the TVA is the only thing that can save everyone from he who remains. I called it that the true reason Loki wanted the TVA to stick around was because it was his only feeling of security and belonging again. I called it. 12. The scene in the record store was cinematically stunning. The hand grab and miss, the spinning record, Sylvie being cornered as the world unravels. Number 13. The fact that as Sylvie's world unravels, her expression isn't horrified, it isn't devastated, it isn't destroyed. It's resigned, defeated. She can leave anytime she wants. She'll survive, but she's just lost everything. Number 14. When Loki says everyone is fine without the TVA, he is really saying they're all fine without him. His eyes are open, and he sees that he is being selfish. Really, he needs them, not the other way around. He will be all alone without them, but they all have perfectly happy lives to go back to that don't involve him. It's heartbreaking. Number 15. The fact that when the timeline begins to collapse, all of Loki's friends have different reactions to being spaghettified. Obi is questioning, figuring out what he did wrong as he dies. Mobius is desperate, trying to escape back to his kids in his last moments. B-15 was horrified, crying out, and Sylvie, like in the record shop, was simply resigned and hopeless. She is so used to losing. Number 16. As the noise overlaps when Loki is grasping at the time unraveling around him, one of the noises you can hear is Sylvie's line from season 1. We're destined to lose. Number 17. 
Mobius' desperation to get back to his kids as he is spaghettified hurts even more when you remember that his wife got blipped. The way he sees it, the same thing is happening to him right now, and his kids are about to lose him in the exact same way they lost their mom. Number 18. The fact that when Loki says, it's about who, he looks at Mobius, his best friend, and when he says, I can rewrite the story, he looks at Sylvie, the person who told him to write his own story. That's just pretty cool. 19. As we discussed, earlier in the episode, Loki doesn't have an identity, but now he is embracing one, the god of stories. He is finally having control over his own life, something he has never had before. Odin kidnapped him, Thor pushed him around, the TVA decided he was doomed to die and lose over and over and over again. But now Loki is the author, and he is rewriting the story. Number 20. Time travel is such a fitting ability for someone who is the god of both mischief and stories. I don't know, it just makes sense. It's cool. And those were 20 awesome moments and interesting facts from Loki Season 2, Episode 5, Science Slash Fiction. This episode was truly a masterpiece, and in general, Season 2 has been so amazing so far. The character development, the cinematography, this episode, yes, Season 2 is great so far. Let's see how they follow it up, because there is a new episode tonight, and I'm excited for that, so let's see how they do. Thanks for watching.